उनके प्रश्न को सुनकर श्रुत गोस्वामी जी ने अपने गुरु शिला सुखदेव गोस्वामी को प्रणाम किया ये सुखदेव गोस्वामी कौन है श्रिया सुख श्री अर्थात श्री राधिका जी के सुख हैं राधिका जी इनको खिलाती थी और कहती थी जे बोलो कृष्ण कृष्ण तो वो कृष्ण कृष्ण मधुर शब्दों में करता था एक दिन पक्षी के स्वभाव वर्षता उड़ करके नंदगांव में जहां कृष्ण और मधुमंगल एक सुंदर बगीचे में बातचीत कर रहे थे उड़ करके वहां पर पहुंचा और एक पेड़ की डाल पर बैठ गया और वहीं से कृष्ण 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 इस प्रकार से बोलने लगा कृष्ण ने सोचा कि राधिका कहां से बोल रही है तो राधिका को इधर उधर में खोजने लगी तो राधिका जी तो थी नहीं फिर पेड़ों की डाल में छिपे हुए हरे पत्तों में देखा ये तो सुख पक्षी बोल रहा है तो उसको बुलाया तो ऐसा कौन है जगत में जो कृष्ण के बुलाने पर नहीं आ सके बस उनके हाथों को आकर के बैठ गया कृष्ण ने क्या बोल रहे थे बोलो तो तो वही कृष्ण 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 बड़े प्रसन्न हुए और वो कृष्ण कृष्ण कहने के बाद में कहता है क्या ओहो मैं बहुत ही दुर्भागा हूं श्रीमती राधिका अपने हाथों में बैठ करके मुझे चावल दूध चावल का खीर खिलाती थी अनार के दाने खिलाती थी बड़ा प्यार करती थी और मैं दुर्भागा उनको छोड़कर के यहां चला आया इतने में राधा जी की सहेली ललिता विशाखा जी वहां पर पहुंची अरे ये सुख तो हमारी राधा जी का है ये दे दो कृष्ण ने कहा जी ले जाओ बुला लो यदि चला जाता है तो ले लो हजार बुलाया किंतु गया नहीं कहती है कि जो आपके पास में चला जाता है वो लौट करके नहीं आता तो ये ऐसे नहीं आएगा किंतु इसके बिना हमारी राधिका जी तो जीवित नहीं रहेंगी कृष्ण ने कहा जी मैं नहीं देता इसको बुला लो चला जाए तो हमको कोई आपत्ति नहीं वो भीतर में जसोदा मैया थी उनके पास में गई और रो करके बतलाया जी इसके बिना तो राधा जी रह नहीं सकती इसलिए आप कृपा करके किसी प्रकार से उस पक्षी को हमें दे दीजिए जसोदा मैया साथ ही साथ में गई और एक झपट्टा मार करके उस पक्षी को ले लिया और हाथ जो है सब समय पशुओं के साथ में पक्षियों के साथ में खेलता है चलो इधर में नंद बाबा तुम्हारे लिए बैठे हुए हैं स्नान करो और भोजन करो कृष्ण भगवान होते हुए भी स्वयं कुछ न कर सके जसोदा मैया उनको खेच करके ले गई और फिर वो सुख पक्षी ललता विशाखा के हाथों में दे करके भेजवा दिया जब कृष्ण की लीला अंतर ध्यान हुई कृष्ण गोलोक वृंदावन में चले गए तो कृष्ण ने इस सुख को आदेश दिया ये तुम यहीं पर रहो और वहां पर मनुष्य रूप में तुम हमारी कथाओं का प्रचार करो जिसके लिए मैं आया था और जगत के लोग हमारा ज्ञान प्राप्त करके पुनः हमारी सेवा में नियुक्त हो उसने कहा जी हम तो श्रीमती जी के बिना जीवित नहीं रह सकते तो भी यहीं से उनको स्मरण करना और रहो रह गए किंतु बड़े उदास हो गए क्या करो कैलाश में गए वही कृष्ण की मधुर लीलाएं शंकर जी पार्वती जी को सुना रही थी और शंकर जी उनको कृष्ण की लीलाएं कहा कर रहे थे भागवत स्कंद द्वितीय तृतीय स्कंद आया तो सृष्टि का चक्र है वो समझ उनकी समझ से बाहर 
स्त्री स्वभाव की हैं उनको तो हरि कथा कृष्ण की लीला चाहिए और शिष्य चक्र बेढ़ा भय वो समझ में नहीं आता इसलिए वो सो गई और उनके बदले में पेड़ की डाल पर वो सुख पक्षी हूं 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 आगे कहिए आगे कहिए करता चला चलते चलते जब भागवत समाप्त हुई तो कृष्ण की मधुर लीलाएं आने को हुई तो वो जग गई जग गई बोले जैसे प्रभु हमने तो कथा सुनी नहीं मैं तो सो गई आप फिर से मुझे बतलाइए तो सुना कौन कौन सुना तो उन्होंने चारों तरफ में खोज करके देखा जी पेड़ों की हरी पत्तियों में एक सुख पक्षी छिपा हुआ वही कह रहा है अपना त्रिशूल लिया और मारने के लिए दौड़े और वो सुख पक्षी उड़ करके सीधे रास्ते से पहाड़ पर्वतों को लांगता हुआ सुखदेव व्यासदेव जी के आश्रम में पहुंच गया और वो वही कथा भगवान की कथा कह रहे थे बिटका जी उनकी स्त्री मुख फाड़ करके सुन रही थी ऐसे और उनके मुख में प्रवेश कर गया सोलह वर्ष तक रहा व्यास जी ने कहा अरे तुम कौन हो भाई जो भो भो माता को कष्ट मत दो घर से निकलो उसने कहा मैं ऐसे नहीं निकलता ओहो तब शंकर जी दौड़ करके आए त्रिशूल लो करके बोले जी यहां पर एक सुख पक्षी आया है व्यास जी ने कहा जी कहो बात क्या है किस लिए उसे ढूंढ रहे हो उसने भागवत मेरी कथा सुन ली अनाधिकारी होकर के भी उसको मैं मारूंगा तो भागवत सुनने का फल क्या है तो वह अजर अमर बन जाता है अमृत की कथा है ना पीने से वह अमर हो जाता है फिर मरता नहीं है अरे बोल बम बोले भाई तुम जबकि वो अमर हो गया तो कैसे मारोगे तुम्हारे हाथ से मरेगा तो शंकर जी भी हंसने लगे लौट गए तो सोलह बरस के बाद में लड़के से पूछा जो उतर जाओ नीचे आ जाओ गर, गर से उसने कहा जी मैं ऐसे नहीं आऊंगा यदि कोई इस माया को हटा दे एक सेकंड के लिए तो मैं उसमें आ जाऊंगा व्यास जी ने कहा जब मैं खुद ही हटा देता हूं कहा तुम्हारे ऊपर में हमारा विश्वास नहीं है किसके ऊपर में विश्वास है कृष्ण यदि आकर के कहे जी हम अपनी माया को हटा रहे हैं तो यह संभव है हम उनकी बात मान करके आ जाए उन्होंने कृष्ण का स्मरण किया कृष्ण आ गए बोले जी भाई तुम माता के गर्भ से निकल जाओ मैं कृष्ण हूं मेरी बात को विश्वास रखो और जल्दी से निकल जाओ इतना करने के साथ में वो सोलह वर्ष की उम्र जैसा सांवले रंग का एक लड़का पैदा हुआ और जन्म होते ही घर से विरक्त होकर कहीं कोई आ सकती नहीं घर से निकल करके बन बन की तरफ में चला उस समय सुखदेव जी कहते हैं कि इतना हमारा युग पुत्र इसको मैं भागवत पढ़ाता अब इस ये नहीं रहेगा तो किसको भागवत पढ़ाएंगे किसे जगत का कल्याण होगा इसलिए उसके पीछे पीछे हा पुत्र हा पुत्र कहते हुए दौड़े किंतु जंगल से प्रतिध्वनि आई कौन किसका पुत्र कौन पुत्र कौन पिता और सुखदेव सुख जी तो आगे बढ़ गए थोड़ी देर के बाद ही में आगे बढ़े कुबेर जी के बगीचे में एक सुंदर सरोवर में अस्परायण सब स्नान कर रही थी नंगी सुखदेव गोस्वामी जी को देख करके कुछ नहीं किया स्नान नंगी करती रही और इनके पिता के पिता के उम्र के जैसे बूढ़े दाढ़े वाले इनको देख करके लज्जा से पुखर से निकल गई और कपड़े पहन करके उनको दंडोत प्रणाम किया जब 
व्यास जी वहां आए लड़कियां उनको प्रणाम कर रही तो पूछो हमारा बेटा नौजवान 16 वर्ष का उम्र का गया तुमको लज्जा नहीं आई और मैं बूढ़ा तुम्हारे दादा पर दादा के उम्र का और हमसे लज्जा किया उन्होंने कहा जी तुम्हारा पुत्र जो है वो ठूठे वृक्ष की तरह है हमें देख करके न उसे लज्जा आई न कुछ आई और हमको भी उसको देख करके जैसे पेड़ कोई खड़ा हो उसे लज्जा नहीं आती ऐसे हमको लज्जा नहीं आई कि तु, तुमको स्त्री और पुरुष का ज्ञान है उनको नहीं है तुम समझ रहे हो कि मैं पुरुष हूं वो स्त्री है इसलिए हम आपके निकट में प्रणाम करने के लिए आए सुख ये कहने का तात्पर्य क्या है सुख दे गोस्वामी एक तो श्रीमती राधिका जी के सुख थे बड़े प्यारे और जन्म से ही इस जन्म में भी जन्म से ही बीतरागी थे कहीं भी उनकी आसक्ति नहीं थी बस निर्विकार निर्विशेष ब्रह्म में उनकी ब्रह्म निष्ठा थी केवल और सब जगह ब्रह्म ही ब्रह्म दर्शन कर रहे थे नेक्स्ट Therefore, we are in Namasaranya, and the sages inquired from Sudha Goswami, "Please tell us how our soul can be happy, how we can achieve auspiciousness." Therefore, before saying anything, Sudha Gos Goswami gave pranam to his spiritual master. His spiritual master was named Sri Sukadev Goswami. So, Gurudev is telling the history: Who is Sukadev Goswami? What is his qualification? We always see with Sri Krishna is Shrimadhi Radhika. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, and Shrimadhi Radhika, she is the supreme enjoyed, the female form of the supreme Lord. Therefore, Sukadev Goswami, he was the parrot of Shrimadhi Radhika, Krishna's most beloved. He used to sit on the hand of Shrimadhi Radhika, and Shrimadhi Radhika used to feed him pomegranate seeds, some sweet rice, bits of ladu, and she would teach him to chant the name of Krishna. Say Krishna, say Krishna, and the parrot on the hand of Shrimadhi Radhika. She is devotion to Krishna personified. He was also chanting Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. But as is the nature of birds, one day he left and went to where Krishna was playing in the garden with his friends like Madhu Mangal. So in India, the parrots are green. So that green bird went and sat in a green tree, and Krishna was under that tree. And that bird began singing the name of Krishna that he heard from Shrimadhi Radhika, just in the same voice as Radharani, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Therefore, Krishna heard, "Who is chant? Is that Radharani? Has she come herself? So much devotion, he is chanting my name." She, then he looked, "Oh, that is not Radharani. That is one bird." In Sanskrit, bird means sukh or parrot. Therefore, Krishna called that bird onto his hand. Anyone called by Krishna, can he stay away? Therefore, that bird came on the hand, and Krishna said, "You should tell me more kirtan. I want to hear my name." That the bird was chanting all the things he had learned from Shrimadhi Radhika. Therefore, that time, the bird was Sukadev Goswami. The bird was thinking, "How unfortunate I am." Shrimadhi Radhika, she is the personification of devotion, and I left her to come to Krishna. She used to feed me and give me so much affection. Therefore, anyway, Radharani was feeling very much separation. Where is my favorite parrot gone? Therefore, she sent her friends, Lalita and Vishaka. They began looking everywhere for the bird. Then they saw that sukh, that parrot, on the hand of Krishna, and they said, "That bird does not belong to you. That below, that bird belongs to our mistress, Shrimadhi Radhika. You should return it." And Krishna said, "There is no chains. The bird is free to go." But the, no matter how much they called, the bird would not leave the hand of Krishna, because Krishna is the supreme attractive. Therefore, Rad, Lalita and Vishaka, the friends of Radharani, they went to Madhya Soda and complained, "Oh, Krishna has stolen the bird which does not belong to him." Therefore, Madhya Soda came, and even though Krishna is the supreme lord, he is controlled by his devotee. Therefore, Madhya Soda grabbed Krishna by the ear and went to beat him, not beating him, but showing her hand. Oh, you are a very dirty boy, always playing with birds, animals. You have no good manners. Therefore, she took the bird off him, 
and said, you should go and take bath. Your father is waiting for you to take lunch. And she dragged him away. <clears throat> so, the purport is, how dear this bird was to both Krishna and Shrimati Radhika. Therefore, after Radha and Krishna performed their pastimes 5,000 years ago, then Krishna called that bird and said, you should stay in this world, because people could not understand me. Therefore, you should stay in this material world and you should speak my activities and my philosophy. Then people can perfect their forms of life and achieve pure love for me. Therefore, that parrot was very sad. How I can leave Radha and Krishna? But still, what can I do? I have to follow the order of the Lord. Therefore, Krishna gave him blessing and he stayed in this mature world in a human form. His name was Sri Sukadev Goswami. Oh, so, that bird, he cannot live without hearing some names, qualities and pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Therefore, Lord Shiva, you've heard of Lord Shiva, Vaishnava Namyatasambhu, he is a great devotee. Therefore, he was always in Kailash speaking the Srimad Bhagavatam to his energy, his wife, Padvati Devi. <clears throat> Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is 12 sections, and the first few sections of the Bhagavatam deal with so much philosophy of the creation, how the Lord maintains, how he destroys, how his various energies are working. Therefore, as Shiva was speaking this, then Padvati, she was sleeping. Because generally people don't like to hear philosophy, they want to hear pastimes of Krishna. Therefore that bird, he knew Shiva is speaking Bhagavatam, therefore he went in that tree and hid there. And Shiva, he had his eyes closed, he could not understand that his Parvati, his audience was sleeping. Therefore as he was speaking, the bird in the tree was calling, very nice, very good, speak more, don't stop. Therefore Shiva was completely absorbed, speaking, 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 and after some time, uh, imitating the voice of Parvati. Then Parvati woke up, Shiva is speaking Harikata. Then she goes, Oh Prabhu, I fell asleep. You can start from the beginning. Start from the beginning, but I could hear you saying, Yes, no, very good, speak more. Who is imitating your voice? Then Lord Shiva looked up and saw that same parrot, that same Sukadev Goswami, Suk. Therefore Shiva became very angry. This unqualified person has heard this pure and spotless Bhagavatam. Therefore he took his weapon, his trident, and went to kill that bird. Then the bird became afraid. It's Armageddon, Armageddon out of here. He ran away to where Lubyasadev was speaking Bhagavatam in Badrik Ashram. Vyasadeva is a literary incarnation of the Supreme Lord. All these books we're reading from, he has compiled. Therefore, Vyasadeva was speaking that same Bhagavatam that Lord Shiva was also speaking. And Vyasadeva's wife, she was hearing Bhagavatam in ecstasy. Therefore, the bird, he flew in the mouth of Vyasadeva's wife. Then Shiva came very angry. Oh, Vyas, I'm looking for a bird. I want to kill him. Then Vyas was astonished. Lord Shiva, who destroys the three worlds, he will destroy a parrot. Then Vyasadeva asked, what offense has the parrot done? Oh, he has heard Bhagavatam. He is not qualified. Therefore, I will kill him. Then Vyasadeva smiled. Oh, Shiva, you know everything, all religious principles. Tell me, what is the result of someone who hears this Bhagavatam? And Shiva said, one becomes immortal. Then Vyasadeva said, if he's already heard the Bhagavatam, how you can kill him? He's already become immortal. <laughs> then Vyasadeva, then Shankar went, Haribo, yes, it's true. <laughs> Therefore, smiling, Shiva left. And 16 years, that bird remained in the womb of the wife of Vyasadeva. After 16 years, then Vyas said, my dear son, it's time to come out. He said, no, I am afraid of material existence, therefore I will not come out. I will not appear in this world of illusion, Maya. Therefore Vyasadeva said, trust my words, I promise you, you come out, I will remove Maya, illusion, you will not be affected. He said, I don't believe you. I only believe the words of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Therefore Vyasadeva meditated and Krishna himself came there. Oh, Sukh, come out, I am Krishna myself. You should have faith in my words, illusion will not touch you. Therefore, Krishna took away his illusory energy. That time, Sukadev Goswami appeared in human form. And what did he do? Immediately he left his mother and father and went to the forest. That time his father, Vyasadev, he was thinking, such a qualified son. He has no material attachment. When a child is born, they're crying, mommy, 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 father. No, nothing. Without any attachment, he went to the forest. Therefore, Vyasadev was thinking, I have many disciples. But no one is qualified like him. I want to give him this Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, Vyas ran behind him. Putre ti putre ti mayatharu. 
Oh, my son, my son, come back. But the trees answered, son, who is son, who is father? This is all illusion. Therefore, as Sukadev Goswami was going in the forest, Vyasadeva was chasing him. They came to the gardens of Kuver, one god in charge of rupees, god of wealth. Therefore, there are many ladies in that pond taking bath. Now taking bath without any clothes. Very beautiful young girls. But Sukadev Goswami, he never even paid them any attention. Guru Mahaj says, <clears throat> like a tree. A tree has no feelings. Who is man, woman, anything? Only he knew Sarva Kalava Midam Brahman. Everything is the energy of the Supreme Lord. Everything is Brahman. Therefore, Sukadev Goswami went past him and those girls who would normally feel shy, they thought, oh, he is not seeing us at all. Therefore, they did not feel shy at all. Then Vyasadev came running, long beard like your grandfather's grandfather, so old. Then the girls became shy and covered themselves. Then Vyasadev said, what's going on? My boy is 16 years old, beautiful, tall, naked. And you saw him, you felt no shyness. But I am like your grandfather's grandfather, so old. And when you saw me, you felt shyness. What's going on? Then the girl said, you see the difference between man and woman. But your son, he sees no difference. Therefore, when we saw him, we felt no shyness. Therefore, Gurudev said, this is the two qualifications of Sukadev Goswami. First qualification, he is a very dear, eternal associate of Radha and Krishna. And his second qualification, that birth and this birth, he had completely no material attachment. Therefore, immersed in Brahmananda, the impersonal aspect of the Supreme Lord, in ecstasy, he went on into the forest. Sattva Swami ne aise jogya sansa se virakt tattakya aur rasik bhagavan ke samast tattva ko lilaon ko jannne wale Shukdeh ko Swami ji ko pranam kiya aur phir Rishiyo ne jo prashne kiya tha कैसे आत्मा प्रसन्न होती है इसके उत्तर में उन्होंने कहा सवै पंसांग परो धर्मो जतो भक्ति र दुख जे अहे तु क्या व्यवहिता जा पर जयात्मा संप्रसिद्ध जयात्मा संप्रसिद्ध मनुष्य मात्र का मनुष्य मात्र का ही नहीं प्राणी मात्र का विश्व ब्रह्मांड में जितने भी प्राणी हैं उन सब का एक मात्र यही परम धर्म है क्या धर्म है भक्ति अधोखजे जो मन पाड़ी इंद्रियों सब प्रकार से अतीत है इनको मन पाड़ी यहां तक कि वेद भी व्यक्त नहीं कर सकते ऐसे जो भगवान है जो अपराकृत सुंदर रूप श्याम सुंदर सलोना रूप नटवर बंसी बजाते हुए गोपियों के साथ में जो कीड़ा करने वाले हैं सबको आनंदित करने वाले और मोहित करने मुग्ध करने वाले हैं ऐसे श्री कृष्ण के चरणों में अहै तु की किसी भी संसारी कामना बासना से रहित होकर और अहै तु की कोई लौकिक भी नहीं पारलौकिक भी कुछ भी अपने प्रसन्नता के लिए नहीं केवल मात्र कृष्ण की सेवा के लिए यदि हो तो यही जीवों का एक मात्र परम कर्तव्य है भक्ति का भक्ति का प्रयोग केवल भगवान नहीं होना चाहिए ब्रह्मा जी शंकर जी दुर्गा जी गणेश जी ये सब यथार्थ में सड़ई स्वज्यशाली भगवान नहीं है शंकर भी उनके दासों के दास हैं ब्रह्मा की तो कहने की बात क्या और सब जितने देवता देवी हैं 
सब कृष्ण के दास और दासियों में है भगवान एकमात्र कृष्ण है और वही कृष्ण राम के रूप में निसिंह के रूप में और और सब अवतारों के रूप में आते हैं वे भगवान अद्वै ज्ञान एक परतत्व है उन्हीं कृष्ण के प्रति कृष्ण को सुख देने के लिए यह होनी चाहिए श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु की कृपा से उनकी प्रेरणा से उनके प्रिय सेवक श्री लरूप गोस्वामी ने समस्त शास्त्रों को संकलित करके उसका सार संग्रह करके भक्ति का की परिभाषा दी है अन्नाभिलाषिता सुन्न ज्ञान कर्माद्यनाव्रतम अनुकूल कृष्णानुशीलन भक्ति तात्पर्य क्या है यदि कोई अपने तन मन वचन और भावनाओं की चेष्टा से अनुकूल और प्रतिकूल चीजों को छोड़कर के अनुकूल चीजों को ग्रहण करते हुए नैरंतर जमई तैल धारावत अविच्छिन्न गति से लगने वाली गुरु और वैष्णव के अनुगत्य में यदि केवल मात्र कृष्ण को प्रसन्न करने के लिए चेष्टा हो तो उसे भक्ति करते हैं किंतु ये उत्तमा कैसे होगी उत्तम कैसे होगी किसी भी कृष्ण की सेवा के अतिरिक्त कोई भी हमारे अंदर में लौकिक पारलौकिक इच्छा न रहे और यह भक्ति कर्म से या ज्ञान से जो तपस्या से होती है नहीं नहीं होती कर्म ज्ञान जोग से तपस्या से अच्छा दिख नहीं होती ठकी नहीं होती है ऐसा होने पर यह उत्तमा भक्ति होती है ध्रुव जी ने भगवान की भक्ति की उनका दर्शन भी किया किंतु उनकी भक्ति सकाम है शुद्ध भक्ति नहीं है इसलिए इसको अच्छी तरह से समझ करके भक्ति का आचरण करना चाहिए कोई शिव जी के मंदिर में गया चौकठा दबाया हे शिव जी हमको पुत्र होगा हमारा लड़का पास कर जाएगा हमारा बिजनेस अच्छा चले जाए चलेगा तो आपको एक रुपए का बताशा चढ़ाएंगे ये भक्ति नहीं है किसी भी मंदिर में जाकर के कोई भी प्रार्थना करते हो अपने लिए तो भगवान को अपना नौकर बनाते हो जब प्रभु हमारी आकर के सेवा करो हमको ये दो दे ही दे ही दे ही पुत्रम दे ही जसम दे ही धनम दे ही कौल दे ही दे ये भक्ति नहीं है भक्ति उससे कुछ अतीत है यू कैन डिफाइन नॉट यू अच्छा Therefore, hearing the questions of the sages of Nami Sadanya, Sutta Goswami gave pranam to his guru. How qualified was his guru, Sukadev Goswami? How he was renounced? How he was expert in all philosophical conclusions? But not only that, how much he was full of the nectar of the names, forms, and qualities of Sri Krishna. <clears throat> Such a guru, he bowed again and again, remembering him within his mind. And he answered the questions of the sages. The question was, remember, how we can achieve auspiciousness for my soul? How I can be happy? There was Sudha Sudha Goswami replied, "Savai pum sam paro dharma yatir bhakti adoksha je hoy tiki apitiyata jyam bhakt sam prasiddhi," which means <clears throat> that only humans are qualified for pure devotion. No, all moving and non-moving entities. Their one supreme religion or occupation or dharma is what? Pure devotion, bhakti. Bhakti. How is how is that? Sri Krishna. That Sri Krishna is completely transcendental. He is he transcends the minds, the mind, the mental and the sensual platform. Therefore, he is beyond the mind. He is beyond the senses. He is beyond the power of speech. He is beyond even the Vedas, the scriptures. Even though the scriptures try to describe the supreme Lord, He is so unlimited; even they cannot completely describe. That Krishna, how is He? He is completely non-material. 
He is not about. He is like an actor on a stage, a top, an expert dancer. He is, plays the flute very sweetly. He performs wonderful pastimes with his devotees like the gopis. He is ecstasy personified and he gives ecstasy to all. And by his beauty and qualities, he bewilders the minds of, and attracts the minds of everyone. Therefore, devotion should be performed to that adoxaj Krishna. It, that devotion should be ahitiki, means it should have no material motive. The only reason why we're performing devotion is only for the happiness of Krishna. Therefore, that religion, or our main duty is to give that type of service to the Supreme Lord without desire for remuneration. Therefore, even though there are many demigods like Brahmaji, Ganeshji, Shankar, Parvati, so many. Still, if we look carefully, they cannot be the complete form of Bhagawan, endowed with six opulences, wealth, knowledge, beauty, strength, renunciation and fame. All those six qualities are only completely present in Sri Krishna. Therefore, Sri Krishna alone is the Supreme Lord, he is Bhagawan, he is Advaigyan Paratattva, means he is the non-dual absolute truth. In other words, nothing is separate from him. There was that Supreme Lord, Krishna, he appeared 500 years ago in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And all these teachings he inspired in the heart of his dear devotee named Sri Rupa Goswami. Therefore, all these we're reading from are the teachings of Sri Rupa Goswami. Therefore, if we want to perform devotion, we should know what is devotion. Rupa, Sri Rupa Goswami has given a wonderful definition. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karmadi navitam anukulena krishnanum silanam bhakti uttama. Gurudev says, really, if we take all the other definitions of bhakti that have been given, all are included in this definition of Sri Rupa Goswami Pad. Therefore, what does it mean? One should perform devotion by one's, by all the endeavors of one's body, mind, words, and feelings, sentiments, for the happiness of Krishna. One should accept what is favorable for his enjoyment, for his enjoyment, and one should reject what is not favorable for his enjoyment. One should perform devotion to him in an unbroken stream, not like half an hour in the morning, honey bowl, honey bowl, then 23 hours forgetting. Like a stream of honey comes from a jar in an unbroken stream, the body, mind, words and soul should be performed in an unbroken stream for the happiness of Krishna. But more than that, it should be done under the gui expert guidance of a perfected spiritual master. Otherwise your devotion may come off the rails. Then this is called Uttam Bhakti or the topmost form of devotion. That Uttam Bhakti will not be mixed with anything else. It will be pure. It will not, that person who is performing Uttam Bhakti or devotion to Krishna should have no ulterior motives. He should not desire anything material or spiritual in exchange for his service. Devotion should not be covered by karma, fruitive activities. It means I'll do this activity and I will get this result. You'll be so busy in that you'll have no time for devotion. Therefore, karma should not cover devotion. And gyan should not cover devotion. Gyan means, some people think we are all the Supreme Lord, but if everyone is God, then how you can do service to Krishna? Therefore, that gyan, that type of knowledge may cover devotion. Therefore, fruit of activity and knowledge should not cover devotion. Therefore, we should take a lesson from the Srimad Bhagavatam and we should not be like Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva worshipped the Supreme Lord, but he had a desire, I want my own universe. So we should not be like that. Gurudev said, we should understand clearly what is this pure devotion. So Gurudev is here for one week, and every night for one week he will try to explain to us what is the pure devotion. Otherwise we might practice something which is not pure devotion and we cannot get the result. Guru Maharaj gives an example of someone performing devotion for material benefits. There's one guy, he goes to the temple, and he buys a sweet for Lord Shiva. That sweet is the cheapest one. It costs maybe one rupee. 10 New Zealand cents. Or maybe he buys the cheapest incense he can find in the market. He goes to the temple and he offers that to Lord Shiva. That incense is worth maybe 10 cents, 20 cents. And what's he asking for? Hey Shiva, give me a son. 
give me a wife, give me a new wife, give me a new car, my business may be successful, my son, he may have a son, I may be a grandfather, my bank, my government should not find out about my secret bank accounts. He's asking many, many things from? First he's keeping the sweet to himself because God not giving and he's not giving his sweet. <laughs> Therefore Gurumai said this is not devotion. Because instead of serving God, you're becoming me, you're making God your servant. Therefore, this is not the symptom of pure devotion. Go Pemanandi. कल फिर इसी समय होगा और कल का कोई प्रोग्राम है उसको आप अनाउंस करना